Welcome to the Caribbean. Home to coral reefs, mangroves, seagrasses, and rocky shores, but best known for its sandy beaches. Scientists have recorded more than 12,000 marine species here, one of which is the four-winged flying fish, Herendictus affinis. Today, our journey takes us to the islands of Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago. With around 330 kilometers of water between them, these islands share a combined landmass of over 5,000 square kilometers and a population of 1.7 million people. Tobago and Barbados also share a dependence on a fishery of high cultural and economic importance, the flying fish fishery. A flying fish abundance survey cruise conducted in 1988, in addition to more recent research efforts, has clearly tracked and defined the distribution of flying fish within the region. Research utilizing genetic testing also concluded that in addition to Barbados and Tobago, the Caribbean's flying fish stock is also shared by the islands of Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Martinique, making the species a shared resource. Tiging was done to see the migration and how the stocks move within the region, and as a result, um, we recognize that there's an Eastern Caribbean flying fish stock. Um, so we have movement from as far down as uh, Trinidad and Tobago in the south, right up to Dominica, uh, in the north, northern um, Lesser Antilles. So, because of that, we re recognize that the flying fish fishery is also fish not only by Barbados, although we're the main um, catchers of flying fish, um, but there are other countries involved. Uh, to get Tobago, of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, they are the second largest contributors at the time when we look at the catch historically. We also have French territories, um, Martinique, uh, who also have a flying fish fishery. And of course, there's Dominica, there's a fishery there in St. Lucia, and to a lesser extent, um, Grenada. Combined, these countries normally have a flying fish total catch of up to 4,600 metric tons in years without influxes of sargassum. This amount accounts for a significant percentage of all fish landed in the Eastern Caribbean. Yet, the socio-economic importance and use of flying fish varies considerably among the countries. For example, in Grenada, flying fish accounts for less than 3% of all fish landings, and it is used mainly as bait for other fisheries. However, in Barbados, flying fish accounts for approximately 70% of all fish landings, making its residents and tourists the largest consumers of this highly sought-after seafood in the region. Exploited for many centuries, research shows that over 13 species of flying fish are landed in the Eastern Caribbean, but the four-winged flying fish is the main species targeted by the fisheries. It is also food for larger predator fish such as dolphin fish and billfish. With big eyes and streamlined body and hugely enlarged pectoral fins, the flying fish is the only fish known for its ability to glide for long distances across the ocean's surface. The four-winged flying fish has an average lifespan of one year reaches maturity at around seven months and has a unique spawning ritual. Research indicates that spawning takes place from November to July. This spawning period also coincides with the seasonal availability of adult flying fish to the fisheries. During these months, the female flying fish navigate the vast open ocean in search of floating debris such as seaweed or palm fronds on which to lay their egg masses. These eggs are then fertilized by the male of the species. One street away from me, there is where the, flying, the boning of flying fish started. So after 
I left primary school, I went and take up that trade on my own, that skill. And after learning to do the boning of the fish and whatever, I was able to open my own business. I fillet flying fish at the age of 12 years. That is what I do for a living. I secure that as a job for me because it's the only thing that I've known. My family depend on it. I depend on it. I've been doing fishing all my life. My brother, my brothers, the whole families are fishers. According to observers, there has been a noticeable change in flying fish activity. These changes include variations in seasonality and the amount of flying fish caught, as well as changes in the behavior of the flying fish. Previously, you used to catch flying fish that you had to leave flying fish. But now, many times ago, you can get bit. Much more than catch flying fish. You understand? I, I, I was never a flying fishman, but the first year I had a boat in, in, in what, what year it was, what year? 80, 80, 23. I went, went to a tank, I kept some flying fish, when I come in, there was nobody to buy it because the boat went to Trinidad, and I had to dump over 3,000 more flying fish. One of my main fish that we go after is flying fish and dolphin, which is the Dorado or Mahi Mahi. A couple of years, a couple of years gone by, the flying fish stock deplete in the sense that you're not catching them as much as you used to. And sometimes when we go out there, the flying fish start taking the net night instead of day, you know? So sometimes you'll be there from six o'clock in the morning, you start catching them flying fish from anything about four o'clock in the afternoon, okay? At that time, that is time to come back home. We don't have that sort of vessel that we could spend overnight, you know? So the Bajans have the advantage on us. With that you know so even one thing that we understand where that is concerned the flying fish is not as it used to anymore things are changing and changing really really bad for fishermen what's causing these changes some speculate that these variations are due to climate change currents of colder or warmer seawater the large influxes of sargassum seaweed into the caribbean seismic surveys oil drilling and even overfishing. Like today, this first boat came in, nothing. So we don't know what the other boat will have. But if things are bad, as you can see, majority of the fishing boats are in, they didn't go out today. But just as we say, some days are better than some. But for the past few years, probably the past four or five years, you haven't get a good reception of the fish, you know? And I was home most of the time. So like the flying fish business, like it dying out slowly because I can remember some years ago when they catch fish. The amount they catch they had also throw back in the sea. Not, not, not so anymore, you know. This has led to irresponsible fishing practices by some fishers who have resorted to using smaller mesh nets to catch flying fish. This has resulted in the catch of juvenile flying fish which can negatively impact the replenishment of the shared flying fish stock. Other fishers have adapted to the change in flying fish activity by increasing their fishing effort by utilizing better equipped vessels which are able to go fishing for longer hours, even days. Fishers have also taken to traveling longer distances to find flying fish. Some fishers have reported they sometimes travel nearly 500 kilometers to find and catch flying fish due to its high demand. San Diego, San Diego, 300 months of flying fish. Yes, as long as the price is up, as long as we can know we get a, a good price with flying fish, we go for them. But when the price gets low, we're not burning our monger fuel for, the, for lower prices for flying fish. So if we can get one flying fish for a dollar, we will go hundreds of miles for them. You understand? And there's like three or four hundred miles, I don't know if you get flying for a dollar, you can catch them. This in itself has the potential to create new challenges for an already struggling industry. Across the region, the practice and method of catching flying fish has remained the same for generations. To mimic naturally occurring spawning habitat 
and to attract flying fish. Fishermen drop palm branches or bundles of sugarcane leaves tied together into the water, set their surface floating gill nets and wait for a few hours. When successful, fishers have been known to catch upwards of 10,000 flying fish in a single fishing trip. With few technological advancements in the fishery, many fishers are calling for the introduction of new technologies to assist in tracking and locating the fish. The flying fish need technology to find them. Tuna boats have technology to find plankton water to find tuna. I feel we should get technology to find, to find out so uh, the bigger boat can go further in the sea to find flying fish. A number of existing environmental, economic and social issues currently limit the development of the flying fish fishery in the Eastern Caribbean. These include poor local, national and regional management of the fishery, irresponsible fishing practices and land-based human activities which continue to adversely affect the health of the marine ecosystem that supports the flying fish fishery. To address these issues, the first sub-regional fisheries management plan in the Eastern Caribbean has been adopted, and its implementation endorsed by six Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism, CRFM, member states. That is Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago. Titled the Sub-Regional Fisheries Management Plan for the Flying Fish in the Eastern Caribbean, or Sub-Regional FMP for short. This voluntary non-binding plan was drafted through extensive stakeholder consultations at both the national and regional levels in Barbados, Grenada, St. Lucia and Trinidad and Tobago. Guided by the Caribbean Community Common Fisheries Policy and based on the precautionary and ecosystem approaches to fisheries management, the sub-regional FMP has four objectives. One, to assist stakeholders in implementing an ecosystem approach to flying fish fisheries management. Two, to preserve the shared flying fish stock through the use of sustainable fishing practices. Three, to ensure the long-term sustainability of the flying fish stock and, in so doing, improve the lives of those whose livelihoods depend on the management of the stock. Four, to protect and maintain the health of the marine ecosystem that supports the flying fish fishery. The sub-regional FMP is drawing on the best scientific information available in fisheries management and is being used to inform decision-making such as determining a combined sustainable catch level for this shared stock. The implementation of the sub-regional FMP is also allowing for fair pricing, developing programs to educate and train individuals within the fishing industry, managing the demand and supply of resources, developing and maintaining fishing agreements in the region, and the collection of accurate and timely data from all countries participating in the Flying Fish Fisheries Management Plan to determine the maximum allowable share catch and regulate catch levels. With the implementation of this plan, there is great potential for job creation due to the establishment of thriving flying fish fisheries in previously underdeveloped markets. To ensure sustainable management of flying fish stock and the continued health of the ecosystem which supports the fishery, the implementation of the sub-regional FMP is a must. Governments and all stakeholders of the flying fish fishery should be encouraged to prioritize the implementation of the FMP locally, nationally, and at the sub-regional level. It is of utmost importance that as a people, as a region, we work together to ensure the sustainability of this shared flying fish stock for the benefit of this generation and generations to come.